part of the process is just to look at that self-criticism, right? Because it, it's part of being human. We all have that piece of ourselves. But to step out and look from that truth that is the non-egoic state, that that is our true truth, our spirit, or our soul, or our higher self, whatever you want to call it, and that perspective is then accessible when we're in the chaos of the doing, doing, doing. Oftentimes we can't access that part of ourselves. Hey everyone, it's Amy Lynn Durham and you're listening to Create Magic at Work. Create Magic at Work is on a mission to equip senior leaders with tools they need to be a true quantum leader and actually understand what that means. Improve employee engagement, retain top talent, and transform your workplace culture to have less drama and stress. So let's start making magic. Hey everyone. So I made a mistake. I had recorded a solo episode for all of you on compassion for self and how to utilize that to make your life better. And I didn't have my podcast mic turned on and the episode turned out um, sounding really crappy. And so um, funny enough, it was a episode about self-compassion and not expecting perfection and not beating yourself up for mistakes that you make. Right around that same time, I was a guest on the Chakras and Chardonnay podcast with my dear friend, Maria Mays, and she was gracious enough to let me use this interview and let it live on the Create Magic at Work podcast. It is such an amazing peek into the Create Magic at Work world. It also gives you amazing tips on how to have compassion for self. And we also talk about some of my favorite things, which is drinking champagne and in a celebratory way. And we deep dive into some some other fun things like that. So please take a listen. I think it'll really enhance your life and your day and your week. And Maria, thank you for letting this this interview live on the Create Magic at Work podcast. Sending magic to everyone. Take a listen. Well, welcome to another episode of Chakras and Chardonnay. I am super excited to share my guest with you today. Before I do so, I want you to do me a favor. And that is, as you're listening to this, I want you to think about someone in your life who's been there as a constant, a constant support through the good, the bad, and the ugly, and just kind of a rock in your life. And so my guest today has been one of the people who have been that for me. Now, I'm really excited to introduce Amy Lynn Durham. And I asked her to be on this podcast, not because she's been such a rock in my life, although that's a huge part of what makes her an amazing being in my mind, but because she's got a ton of wisdom, ton of experience, and is doing so much work to bring magic into the corporate world. So Amy is the founder of Create Magic at Work, where she uses her training and certification work through executive coaching and spiritual intelligence to really pull in a combination of spirituality and development into the workplace. And so think about that. Bringing magic into the workplace is literally what Amy does. And so she's also the host of Create Magic at Work, which is a podcast that is in the top 5% global ranking, which I mean, that alone is huge, right? And is an author of a book by the same name, which I highly recommend you read. Uh, She's an executive contributor for Brains Magazine and has guested on over 70 podcasts herself, sharing insights on how leaders in the workplace can become empowered and embrace their full potential. So she, prior to this world, was on the other side of the equation as a corporate executive herself. And so she really pulls in real world practical application of these teachings. And so I'm so excited that she's here to talk with us today. And she's got tons of certifications, everything from C. Berkeley executive coach to a spiritual intelligence coach and most recently an Edgewalker coach. So I'm so grateful that she said yes to being a guest on Chakras and Chardonnay. And I'd like to welcome her right now, Amy Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Maria. You almost had me in tears already in the beginning with your <laughs> intro. So <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to be here. Excited to share some magic today. Awesome. So is there anything I left out or anything you want to emphasize in terms of my short introduction for the listeners? No, that was 
great. The one thing to emphasize with um, spiritual intelligence in the workplace, I always like to remind everyone that it's a lot of times it's something that people haven't heard of before. Um, and it's a framework of leadership skills that's that comes from a faith neutral perspective. And really people that are interested in these skills or in coaching to these skills are people that have a strong foundation already in emotional intelligence and they want to go beyond that. They want something deeper. Um, and, and so it's, it's a faith neutral skill set. Okay. Spiritual maybe, intelligence. Yeah. Maybe to, I appreciate you clarifying that and, and maybe just share with the listeners what your typical client looks like, who you're typically working with these days. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> I was, I've been asked that a couple of times before and I'm like, so the the people that really love this work they're they're diff- they're all different so i i i work with a diverse group of individuals obviously because this is very inclusive because it's faith neutral mm-hmm. um one thing that really touches my heart with a lot of my clients are the ones that do the work and approach me to do the work are some that may have felt judged or shamed in a religion they grew up in their childhood. So Mm -hmm. they've shut that part away Mm -hmm. and maybe they've shut a part of themselves away. And a lot, what a lot of studies are finding is, you know, there's all this chatter and talk all over LinkedIn. Let's be our authentic selves at work. Mm -hmm. Oh, we want you to be your authentic self at work. And yeah, you know, show up as you, but really sometimes it's double talk because they're saying, well, show up as you like us. Mm. And I really find that in particular, the LGBTQ plus community really thrives in this work. They're a huge part of my client base, but then also, you know what? Middle-aged white men (laughs) that have been basically shut down as well to be able to express their vulnerability and courage in an emotional way in the workplace. They step into my world too. So yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And just, I just feel like we need to pause and just honor that, that work because being able to step into your work world with your true authenticity is something that I know was a challenge for me for a long time. And just the fact that you're liberating others to do that through the work you're doing is amazing. So I just want to honor that for a moment. Thank you. Thank you. I will receive that. I'm I'm opening. <laughs> that's a practice I'm working on right now is being open to receive. So mm. yeah. yes, I will receive that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So Tell me what well-being teaching would you like to share with our listeners today? Because I know you have so many, it'd be hard to pick one, but what, what do you have to offer? Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I thought about this and I'm coming off our conversation yesterday. We did a LinkedIn live Mm -hmm. uh, pop-up show. That was really fun. And I have to say out of all of the conversations I have with clients, I don't think there's one that has not dipped into how do I make wise and compassionate decisions for myself? Mm. Um, That's a skill in spiritual intelligence. It's skill 19. If you're working through the 21 skills with me and how, how do I do that? So one of the well-being tips, well, first of all, I I ask some really insightful questions that help bring some self-awareness there, right? Like, Mm -hmm. well, how do I set boundaries when I feel like people are, are draining my energy? That's a big one for, mm-hmm. for people at work. How do I forgive myself if I make mistakes? How do I release perfectionism? So if I were to give you know a well-being tip that you could actually practice today, because these are obviously like big questions. You can't snap your fingers and be like, I'm not going to be a perfectionist anymore. And I'm going to forgive myself for everything and feel amazing for the rest of my life. That's (laughs) yeah. That's like a daily, (laughs) yeah, that's a daily practice and a, and a life journey for sure. But one thing I think that really resonated with everyone and resonates with everyone as a coaching question and session, and also sharing 
is can you treat yourself? Will you? And you can practice this. This is something that you wanted to share that someone can implement immediately. Can you practice treating yourself with the same kindness, concern, and support that you would offer to a good friend? Mm. Can you be understanding and supportive of yourself, even when things are tough? And I go back to the way you opened the episode today, talking about, I was getting emotional because you were saying, you know, someone think about someone that's your rock, that's there for you. That's what we're talking about. Can you do that for yourself? Mm. Can you not expect perfection from yourself? Can you forgive yourself when you make a mistake? Can you not beat yourself up for things that have gone perceivably wrong? Can you acknowledge what happened, learn from it, forgive yourself, treat yourself with the same kindness, concern, and support that you would offer to a good friend? So it pulls you mentally out where you can, in in spiritual intelligence, there's a lot of work with understanding ego versus higher self Mm -hmm. and and what your level is at that. So it's a ranking zero to five and you can work on that. And so by doing something like, how can I treat myself like I would a good friend? It pulls you into that higher self moment and out of your ego, which, you know, ego comes from fear, protection, defensiveness. And you can look down at yourself and, and look at yourself as that friend that you would care for. And that's where you're starting to practice accessing that inner wisdom, inner compassion, mm-hmm. higher self. And if you believe in a higher power from a specific religion, you can access that higher power. What would that higher power you believe in say to you? My guess is because there's a common thread through most religions is forgive yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. Compassion, self-compassion, right? Yeah. So, Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, there's so much there, right? There's, there's so much there. And and I'm, I'm right there with you in terms of, I can't think of a client that I've worked with one-on-one where it hasn't been part of the process is just to look at that self-criticism, right? Because it's part of being human. We all have that piece of ourselves, but to step out and look from that truth, that is the non-egoic state that that is our true truth or spirit or soul or higher self, whatever you want to call it. And that perspective is then accessible when we're in the chaos of the doing, doing, doing. Oftentimes we can't access that part of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So how do you recommend folks go about keeping that front of mind? Like you mentioned, you know, and as we talked about yesterday too, you know, these things are daily practices. It doesn't happen Mm -hmm. overnight. So I love that, that question of, will you rather than, can you, will you, you were very intentional about your wording there. Um, will you treat yourself as you would a friend with compassion, with deep concern and that support being that rock for self? Mm -hmm. What's, what's a way that we can apply that daily? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Will you make that choice? It's a choice and it might feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And the way to do it daily is to just start trying it, especially if you haven't before. And all of us go through that. It's like we have that internal, we call them ants, right? The negative, any negative thought or something. Automatic Um, negative thought. Thank you. Automatic negative thoughts. We all have the ants crawling Mm -hmm. around in our, in our head. So it's the awareness, that self-awareness. Oh, I have an aunt that just came up. Mm-hmm. Now, why did you make that decision? You, I, I'm so ashamed. Like, I can't believe I did that. Like, I feel like an idiot, you know, whatever it is that you're telling yourself, oh my gosh, it's that recognition, that self-awareness. There's an ant in my head. What am I going to do with this ant? And how am I going to handle it? And what would I say to a friend that had an ant come up? Like, oh my gosh, you are so amazing everyone makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like you got this, like, this is a part of the life journey, whatever change, let's change the narrative, re retell the story in our brain. That's one thing you can do. Part of, part of it though, is flexing that muscle underneath Mm. of 
improving the percentage of the time that you're operating from higher self or from inner wisdom and inner compassion, because that helps you bounce back faster. So there are certain things that you can do that, that are easy, that, that can help you operate from higher self, a higher percentage of time versus staying in that ego state. And one of the things I developed for create magic at work is the journal prompt card deck. So you close your eyes, um, you pull a card, it gives you a message and an affirmation. And then there's two questions that you can journal on and just journaling helps you access higher self. It puts ego aside and just helps you tap into that inner wisdom and compassion that's within you. And then by doing that, that's a quick, easy one, right? Then you'll just notice, you'll just notice yeah, I lose it once in a while, mm -hmm. but I'm seeing that I'm bouncing back quicker. You know, I have a client I've worked with for a year and a half now. And when I first started working with them, they would fall apart when drama happened at work and it would just put them out for the evening, for the night, couldn't sleep. Just, you know, they're worked up, they're triggered, they're flooded. Mm -hmm. Um, by just doing this practice, they bounce back a little faster. They sleep at night now. They're a little calmer. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Yeah. I mean, if that isn't a testimonial to this being worth doing the work of, of evoking a little self-compassion practice like this on a daily, I don't know what is, because who doesn't want to sleep better, feel calmer, um, all of those things. So that's awesome. Yeah. Where do you find, um, just if you look at your client base and kind of a, a overarching, you know, 10,000 foot view, where do you find the biggest area of struggle with this? Because you're, even though you're working with people in, in a work focus, right, as an executive mm -hmm. coach, our personal lives spill over into every aspect of it, right? And so is there one particular area that you see or, or just yeah. some commonality? You're just, yeah, I just thought of something because I'm like, hmm, that's a really good question. Because at work, it seems that we can flex that higher self muscle a little bit stronger because there's boundaries such as policies and HR rules that surround us. So it's, it's mm. like, hmm, if I can behave this way with someone at work, why can't, and this is the answer to your question, behave this way at home in my personal relationships. Mm. And there's where you get the PhD in spiritual intelligence or in being able to maintain inner and outer peace, regardless of the situation you're in, even when you're under great stress and still make wise and compassionate decisions for yourself and for others. And I often find that some of these practices arise in people's personal lives a lot more than in the workplace. Once they, you know, they, they talk about workplace, business, everything, we start working on these skills and then it's like, oh, my partner is doing X, Y, Z. I feel like I can't be centered around them or operate from higher self around them. Um, and then it's like a whole new practice or test, right? Right. That's when the real work begins, right? When it's your <laughs> closest, most intimate relationships. Don't we know that? <laughs> um, that's really interesting. And, you know, you mentioned, and I've actually been meaning to ask you this question for a while, but always forget. So I'm going to leverage this opportunity to ask it now while it's front of mind. In SQ, it, mm -hmm. it sounds like I've heard you say inner peace and outer peace, several different mm -hmm times. And so what is the distinction or the difference from the SQ perspective of those two terms? Yeah. So inner peace is really self-explanatory, right? Like how you feel inside. But I think you're also wondering like, well, what's the outer? Well, yeah. Outer in when, particular. It's what I'm wondering. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's where people actually feel that from you. They, they see it. The outer world is experiencing your social mastery of 
Okay. Being aligned with the ebb and flow of life or being a calming and healing presence. So now I will add some people are really great at faking outer peace. I'm thinking of work meetings Mm -hmm. (laughs) and inner is just a whole big ball of turmoil, right? So that used to be me. <laughs> that used yeah. to be you just described me to a T. Uh, <laughs> so you, the, the, six, a six prior bowl, version bowls, of me. Right? That was maybe Maria 1.0. I'm at like uh-huh. 1.0 now. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay. So, SQ speaks both because okay. if you're truly peaceful within, I would imagine, right, for all of us, that the outer is going to show that. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you clarifying that. Cause I've always thought, well, cause I focus a lot, obviously part of my, my mission, my purpose here is to be a conduit for inner peace, to help people tap into this and create practices that are, you know, sustainable for the long term for having that baseline of inner peace. But the outer, I've always thought of that as the, you know, that's the world that I can't control, right? I can't control the the stresses that are going to come at me. I can control my reaction to them based on my level of having a baseline inner peace. So it really helps me now understand the terminology and the SQ uh, perspective of, of how then that outer peace, how that translates then and affects and has the ripple effect to everyone around you. So from a leader perspective, you know, you're working with a lot of leaders you know, taking even this specific tip that you dropped us with asking the question, will you treat yourself with the same kindness and support and concern that you would a dear friend? Will you do that today? Taking Mm -hmm. that to a leader and that being infused into them, that energy, then they're going to bring into the next meeting with the team that's going to be a whole different energy if they're coming yeah. one with one of self-compassion, because as we know, if we don't have deep compassion for self, we truly can't have it for others. And Not. so then that the illustration you painted of, you know, the, the person that's coming in, walking a good game, looking like the, you know, leader that we all want to work with at work. Cause they've got it all figured out, calm, cool, and collected. But if they're going home and beating themselves up at night, even though they might walk a smooth game when they come in, there's going to be a a subtle energetic difference there. Yeah, there is. And that's why I, I brought this up to focus on first, because if exactly what you said, if we can't have compassion for ourselves, we cannot give it to others. And that really, that lesson will continue to reverberate on different layers and levels. If you look for it, um, as you move through, there's strong data that shows that whatever energy level we're showing up from, Mm -hmm. it ripples out. If we're in a position of power, it ripples out to our teams 10 times over. So if you're operating from a space of fear and anger, imagine that multiplied by 10 with your team that's in your charge. And so it's really important that's why this is so important to, oh. to take a look in the mirror. And yeah, if, if you, I mean, if you're, if you're interested in a deeper sense of meaning in life and leadership for the greater good, mm-hmm. then yeah, that's why this is important. <laughs> wow. And I, and I think, you know, something just came up for me as you said that, and that is Oftentimes, um, and just to the the listeners, you know, many of whom are likely parents, as as being leaders in the home, that that same equation, your kids are picking up on everything, every time you beat yourself up, every time, even if it's not something really obvious verbal, but they see the tendencies that that energy and that modeling is is if if it has the ten. 10 over effect Mm -hmm. said, right. Was that the data? If it has that in a, in a work environment, a professional environment, think about what it might have in a home environment. Yeah. And don't beat yourself up for beating yourself up. Right. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. So, so it's um, the recognition, right? The judgment, right? Yeah. Just the recognition, down. the recovery, the mm -hmm. radical self-forgiveness, treat, pull yourself out of your body, look down at yourself, treat yourself like you would a good friend. Yeah. Um, all of those things. Cause we talk about a lot of leadership practices and trainings talk about legacy or what's the legacy I'm going to leave and who you are. If you're this amazing leader at work, but you're no, you're not exhibiting or you're not operating from higher self or inner wisdom, compassion at home. I mean, that's your legacy. Like who, who are you really? And what legacy are you leaving every day with your choice in how you want to move through the world? Yeah. I love that. I love that. Wow. Amy, thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, I, I just, I want to wrap this piece up right there because that was so powerful. So just as a reminder to the listeners is just, you know, maybe throw it on a post-it note, maybe put this on your lock screen on your phone. This question, will you treat yourself with the same kindness, concern, and support that you would a dear friend? Yeah. Or, and even I got to say, I treat myself with the same kindness and Turn support. it into yeah. an <laughs> affirmation. Yeah. 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 I think that's yeah. a natural progression, right? Mm -hmm. Starting with the question and then moving into the affirmation. So beautiful. Thank you so much. So yeah. I'd like to transition this conversation now into one about wine. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Amy, what is your favorite type of wine? And I'm not going to say if any, like I asked some of my other guests, <gasps> last guests because I know with you, who there, we have a little history, so we know. I yeah, know. anybody that knows me. So, so you know, you mentioned I'm an edge walker coach. Uh, there's 19 in the world. One of the qualities is playfulness. So we talked about a lot of deep stuff, but I'm glad you brought up my favorite wine because we have to remember to have fun and open that cre creative part of our brains for conflict solving. So anyone that knows me knows that a great glass of bubbly is my thing. So mm -hmm. I've always loved champagne, Prosecco, and I've recently fell in love with a vignette that I really love, but it's, it's mainly champagne for sure. Nice. So tell me a little bit about what you love about the bubbles. Describe it for me. So I like how I like when it's ice cold. Okay. And bubbly. It feels, it feels very, um, I feel like it feels very celebratory when I'm drinking a glass of champagne. Like I always want to be celebrating something. It just adds that certain like fun element for me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll even sprinkle some of that edible glitter that's around lately that's floating around. Ooh, um, a... Yeah. <laughs> so just that celebratory feeling. Let's celebrate something with an ice cold glass of champagne or Prosecco. Sounds good. Well, let's do that. I think you and I need to get together soon and do that. And before I let you go, I'd love for you to share with the listeners where they can find you, follow your work and possibly work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. I thought you were going to say where they can get a good bottle of champagne. That too. I'm Go ahead kidding. and share that too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So first off, I love uh, Voof. I think most people do. So I'll just throw that out there, but how you can work with me or send me a bottle of <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Um, <laughs> so you can go to create magic at work .net, it's net, and you can find all of the information there. I'm really active on Instagram. It's all under create magic at work. That's the, the brand LinkedIn and create magic at work podcast. If you want to deep dive into some themes of spiritual intelligence, it's a great resource um, to check out. If you're interested in private coaching, of course, message me and we'll have a chat. Awesome. Thank you so yeah. much, Amy. I'm so grateful that you were willing to come and share some of your wisdom and your magic and your playfulness here. So let's have some bubbly soon. Yay. Thanks, Maria. Thanks for having me. 
Do you have this feeling that you were called to do something very special and important in the world? Do you consciously tune into something higher than yourself for guidance and inspiration? Have you had mystical or spiritual experiences that have provided guidance in your everyday life and work? If you answered yes to those three questions, then you are a fit for a Create Magic at Work coaching program. If you're looking to explore new frontiers in your personal and professional life, I invite you to consider stepping into one of my coaching programs. I specialize in helping people step outside of their comfort zone and embrace the unknown. Whether you're looking to launch a new business venture, navigate a major life transition, or simply push yourself to reach new heights, I can help you achieve your goals. Please schedule a complimentary consultation with me at createmagicatwork.net. Click on work with Amy, and I can't wait to see you. Sending magic to you. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming back every week to listen to a new episode of Create Magic at Work and really helping to support and advocate for healthy leaders, workplaces, and lives for all of us. If you want any information on how to connect with me, click on the link in the show notes. You'll get access to all of the social media links for Create Magic at Work. Stay following along for more amazing episodes where we help you improve productivity and profitability in the workplace and decrease stress. Sending magic to everyone and see you next time.